Hi, welcome to this video of Sifcraft round 3 and 4. And uh, this part of Sifcraft is the late Stone Age um, where they enter into the agricultural part of the Stone Age and um, where they start to build settlements. So before they spawned into the game I had uh, found locations for two settlements and just created a kind of a basic structure for their settlements. And here they are um, doing the first assignment which was to uh, create uh, some fields and so they can generate the necessary food to survive and yeah some students have actually started building I'm not sure that they actually uh, actually managed to to finish the first assignment but uh, it's an example of what happens when uh, students they go into the game they oh there's there's the field so they've they've done a bit of farming before they started building and there you notice how one student just built a wall around his house and that's just the kind of thing you can't really control but it kind of reflects uh, some of their personality personalities. Okay, now they get the assignment that they have to build a, a house in pairs and um, I think I actually gave them the materials to build the house and um, once the house was built I gave them some rewards, uh, gave them some different things that they could use. Um, I was still, I'm still trying to find a right balance between the reward and the assignment, and also giving a reward that uh, makes sense uh, for their game. Um, okay, these guys have also kind of gone against the laws of nature, building fields in layers and. I'd say I'm not building entirely correctly, but I've tried to um, tried to talk to him about actually building uh, correctly uh, regarding how they actually built in the late Stone Age. These two guys we just saw before they had actually built their settlement a long way away from where they were supposed to. Okay. Now there's the guy with the wall, and and um, I'm just uh, flying around, um, inspecting what they've made. These guys have done a good job of actually indicating how the house was constructed. And um, as they finish, I fly around and uh, comment on what they've done and give them uh, a reward. According to how well I think they've uh, built. This is uh, part of my preparation for the fourth round, and I just thought I'd include a bit of footage on uh, me preparing the lesson, just to show how uh, the builder, uh, the building uh, materials or the building um, tools work. Um, the first uh, assignment is for them to build a, a basic burial mound um, and um, which is basically just consists of uh, three big rocks put on top of each other, four big rocks and this was the, the first uh, way of burying their dead. Um, 
you can see it just goes real quick once you've um, in, in a established a, a rhythm and once you've got the, the shortcuts mapped out it really works well and I think uh, what actually takes the longest is planning the, the lessons uh, content and um, creating um, text for the, the students to read and explaining the historical background and also um, creating the assignments um, the building part actually doesn't take that, that long once you have a basic idea um, what you want to put in your lesson um, so I think uh, on average I, I use about two hours uh, all in all just to create um, a level uh, for the students to play in so this is the greater burial mound um, it's probably what the once the Egyptian had pyramids, this is what they were building up in Denmark. Is um, these kind of burial mounds where they could uh, have two hundred dead people? Um, okay, so back to the settlement. These guys have completed their uh, small burial mound, and um, I'm just taking a look at what they've done and. Oh, you're rewarding them with some leather, I believe. Uh, also, I put them into pairs when, when, uh, when they were playing because it seemed to work well that they had a, a game, a, a buddy that they would be sitting next to, talking to, and um, also someone to to cooperate with while they were building. So the next project was building a greater burial mound and um, the guys were off um, digging up stone. I um, can't remember if I actually told them to to build it out of real stone. Um, so they, they had to had to obviously uh, melt down the cobblestone into real stone and start building from there. These guys who build out in the water they are I let them kind of go with the, the just let them build. Um, I think um, it's more important that you have a conversation with them and discuss well does this reflect uh, where they built in the stone age um, and I think a lot of them they they get so consumed by just playing and having fun that they they don't uh, always pay that much attention to um, whether they're building correctly. But uh, mostly, I can see that students are actually making effort to to um, to build according to to what I've. Um, shown them in the, the Sifcraft classroom. As you can see, they've built uh, houses um, according to most measurements of uh, typical houses from that period, which would be about 8, eight by 5 meters. Okay. I'd say the house to the left was a, a bit too advanced and maybe resembled more of a, a Viking age um, building. And, um, but I, I, I just didn't want to go in and uh, and say, well, that's wrong, and uh, we've got to take it all down. I think that would be quite quite demotivating. And in one instance, I, I had to teleport two students all the way back to the classroom just to. Uh, show them what I meant and what I wanted them to build. This is me helping um, a student plan out his burial mound, um, and I was just trying to indicate the, the size of the building to him and um, and how he was to go about it. So. 
That's this guy. He's uh, he's got the basic idea, although he's building something quite big. Um, he's built it up on a hill, and he's got the basic shape. Okay, that basically wraps it up for now. And um, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, gives some inspiration. Bye bye for now.